Let's review electron domains and VESPAR. An electron domain is a region in which at least two electrons are found. There are two types of domains. Bonding domains have two, four, or six electrons that are shared by two atoms. They form a bond. A non-bonding domain is two electrons that are located on a single atom, also called a lone pair or unshared pair. VESPAR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. The main idea of VESPAR is that the electron domains around a central atom will spread out as much as possible in three-dimensional space and so give a molecule its specific three-dimensional shape. The electron domain geometry or geometry has a name based on how many total domains the species has. If the species has two domains, then we say that the geometry is linear. And I represent it with a stick figure that looks like that, where the solid line indicates a domain, one to the left and one to the right, both in the plane of the screen. If there are three total domains, that's a geometry that we call trigonal planar, and it has a stick diagram that looks a lot like a Mercedes-Benz symbol. If there are four total domains, then the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral, and the stick figure looks like that. Again, the solid lines are domains that are in the screen, and the elongated dark triangle represents a domain that's coming out towards us, and the dashed line indicates a domain that is further into the screen. So it kind of gives a little bit of a three-dimensional effect. If there are five total domains, that is a trigonal bipyramidal electron domain geometry, and the stick representation looks kind of like this. We have here an axial domain up top and on the bottom, like the axis of the Earth going from the North Pole to the South Pole, and then we have these three so-called equatorial domains that run around the middle. Basically these three equatorial domains are like a Mercedes-Benz symbol that has fallen over and is laying horizontally, and you couple that with the two axial domains and you have the trigonal bipyramidal electron domain geometry. Finally, if there are six total domains, then you have an octahedral electron domain geometry, and the stick figure looks like that, where you have a domain to the left, to the right, up above, below, towards us, and away from us. Now, the molecular geometry, or the shape, depends on how many of these domains that are shown under the electron domain geometry, how many of these domains have atoms hanging off the end? For example, the tetrahedral electron domain geometry, if you look at the stick figure, you can see there are four possible places for exterior atoms. Now, do all four of those places have an atom hanging off of them? Or do only three of them? Or do only two of them? And the answer to that question is going to tell us the name for the shape. If there is an atom hanging off of each one of these domains that's shown here, then the shape has the same name as the geometry. So for tetrahedral, if there's an atom hanging off all four of these, then the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral, and so is the shape. But if for these domains that I've shown with stick figures on the left side of the screen, if not all of those domains have an atom hanging off of them, then we have to use a different name, and we're going to go through some of those now. Here's an example of a species that has a carbon atom in the middle, oxygen hanging off of each end. The only really possible shape for the linear electron domain geometry is also a linear molecular geometry. So that one's the simplest case. For the trigonal planar electron domain geometry, if 
each domain has an atom hanging off, then the shape is also trigonal planar. If only two of the domains have an atom hanging off, then the molecular geometry is called bent. Look at my Mercedes-Benz symbol here. For the molecule NO2, with N in the middle, there's an oxygen there and an oxygen there, you can see that the shape is bent. And of course there's an unshared electron pair right here. Let's move on. For the tetrahedral electron domain geometry, if there are atoms hanging off all four ends of those domains, that's called a tetrahedral shape. If only three of the domains have an atom, that's called trigonal pyramidal. Here's a new name now. If only two of them have atoms hanging off, as in the case of water, then the shape or the molecular geometry is called bent. Water, for example, has a tetrahedral electron domain geometry, but a bent molecular geometry. For the trigonal bipyramidal, here's what you need to remember, that atoms go axial. Whenever you're adding atoms to this stick figure, atoms first go in the axial positions. That's where they always go first. Once you fill up the axial positions, then you can start throwing atoms onto these equatorial positions. But atoms go axial. A few shapes for the trigon bipyramidal electron domain geometry would be if there are atoms hanging off of all five domains, then the shape is also trigonal bipyramidal. A linear shape would be if we only have two atoms hanging off. And those would, of course, be in the axial positions because atoms go axial. If we have, as in the case of SF4, if we have four of the five domains having atoms hanging off, we call that a seesaw. And if three of those five domains have atoms hanging off, in this case fluorine atoms, then that's called T-shaped. You can convince yourself of those names and how they are actually appropriate if you get out some actual physical models and take a look at these. All right, let's end with octahedral. If all of the domains have an atom hanging off, then the shape or the molecular geometry is also called octahedral. If only five of the six have atoms hanging off and there is thus one unshared pair, then that would be square pyramidal. If we have four atoms hanging off of that central atom and two unshared pairs, that is called square planar.